We will be in the book of Genesis today, chapter 25. The book of Genesis, chapter 25. We're going to pick up on verse 23, read to verse 34. Book of Genesis, chapter 25. That ought to be an easy one to find, book of Genesis. Verse 23. Book of Genesis, chapter 25, pick up on verse 23, read to 34. If you're there, say amen. Amen. All right. If you're not there, you can catch up with us. All right. Let's see what God's word has to say to us this morning. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. And the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there was twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. So the boys grew and Esau was a skillful hunter and a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. And and Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with the same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I am about to die, so what is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils, and then he ate and drank and arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. That story I've read countless times. And God spoke to me a little bit different about that story today. You probably read it. You probably know all about it as well. When I look about the decisions that were made and all the things that played out, I'm like, all these things happened in a moment. In a moment. What's a moment? It's just it's such a brief period of time. We think, you know, it's just a moment. You know, I got my whole life. What's in a moment? That's why I called the title of this sermon, What's in a Moment? We know moment is just a brief period of time. You know, so what's the big deal about that? But you think about it, the sum of our entire life is just made up of moments. That's all it is. Yeah. All those moments together make your life. All the good, all the bad, the highlights, the dark times in your life, they're nothing but moments in time. So what does a matter, what does a moment matter, right? I'm going to tell you, a moment used wisely in your life can affect your life for the rest of it. But a moment used spent foolishly can also affect your life for the, re for the rest of it. What would your life look like if you could have all those moments back and be kind of like, I wish I hadn't done it. If you could just pull those moments back and redo them again. The things that maybe you did or said, if you could just have those moments back, maybe you could change a few things in your life. What would your look life not look like now? It would probably look much different. Quite possibly. The entire trajectory of your life might be different if you could just have some of those moments back. So what's in a moment? It's just a brief period of time. There's nothing to it, right? What's the big deal about a moment? It can set you on a different path. You know, you can be taught the right things to do in life, but when it comes down to actually doing, that falls squarely on you. We blame it on a lot of stuff. You know, I, I don't normally act that way. Or, you know, we say many things. We blame it on our upbringing, our circumstances. You know, you name it. You know, we, the moments to get away from us. Those things that we said and did, if we could only have them back. What's in a moment? I bet Esau probably thought the same thing. What's in a moment? He made a bad decision in that one moment. I hate to think every bad decision that I ever made came back to me. Praise God. <laughs> you know, that's under the blood of Jesus now. 
You know, God forgives you, but that doesn't mean sometimes you still don't have to suffer the consequences for your decisions here. Amen. That's true. As we look at the story of Jacob and Esau, you know, they had a great family lineage. You know, I mean, some people brown on their upbringing in their family. They didn't have that to blame it on. Jacob and Esau had... Jacob and Esau had the family lineage. If you would look at it, you know, they were exposed most likely. It doesn't tell us completely, but they would have been exposed to, to, to what to do in life and what not to do, the right and wrongs in life. They would have been taught all these things. As Abraham being their grandfather and Isaac and Rebecca as their parents, I'm sure they would have trained them up in the ways and taught them the right things to do. They would have given them every opportunity to do the right thing, to know the difference. But when it came time, they have to make their own decisions. You've got to make your own decisions. You know, you can do everything for you can for your children. But when they become adults, they still have to make those decisions. Right. Your parents, you know what? You know, none of them, nobody's parents are perfect because they're human. <laughs> they have to be human, you know, otherwise we wouldn't be here. The thing is, you still, you know, they could have done the right things and you still have to make those choices for yourself. You still have to make those right things. When you get caught up in that moment, do you make the right decision? You know, those moments come along sometimes. You know, I, I think I drive my wife crazy sometimes because when she asked me something, I said, let me think about it a little bit first. <laughs> you know, I hate making snap decisions. But the thing about it is with life, sometimes you have to. But when, it, when I don't have to, I don't. I like to think about them first. You know, now as a young man, I had impulsive behavior, thinking, what was that? You know, I didn't think a whole lot about anything. Whatever impulsive, whatever felt good, hey, that's the way I was rolling with it that day. Whatever come along. Can I get an amen? Anybody else? Come on now. All right, don't leave me up here by myself. <laughs> All right. But God's direction in your life God's Spirit speaking into your life, it helps you to know the difference when those moments come. You're like, you know, I, there's some things in life I've thought about and i thought about and i thought about and I still didn't know what to do. Oh my God, I'm praying about it. What am I going to do here? I prayed about it and I still don't know what to do. God will give you direction if you allow Him. Every moment in life is an opportunity to do the right thing or do what comes easy. What, what is it with coming easy? You know, what, is, what, what usually happens? What comes easy is it's usually a satisfying and immediate need in an ungodly way. You know, you know we're all faced with those decisions, those little things that come along in life. It, it happens. If you only focus on your immediate need, Guess what? You're going to have impulsive behavior and trouble is sure to follow. It's just going to happen. Selfishness and impulsive behavior are going to lead to destruction. You say, but I'm a born again Christian. This wouldn't happen to me, would it? <laughs> yeah. It can happen. I'm telling you, you can go down a path of destruction. You can be born again, but you choose to make decisions that are not of God. You're making the wrong, you're not being directed by God anymore. You're acting impulsively and all what, you know, what feels good and you just want to roll with that. A Christian can be lead, go down a path of destruction because they've allowed to be, their self to be led by something other than God's Spirit. That's right. You can be led by something other than God's Spirit. Sometimes the decisions that we make in life, they can be our undoing. You've worked hard, you've done a lot of good things in life, and you, you know, maybe, maybe as a Christian, you're, you know, you're trying to do the right thing, and you know, one day, you know, what you want your faith to become slight one day when you cross over to the other side. But you know, all that can go by the wayside in a moment because of some decision you've made, you've decided to follow and try to fulfill some need that you think you have in an ungodly way. Don't think temptation won't come your way. Being tempted is not a sin. Giving into it is. We're all going to be tempted. There are things that are going to come your way and you're going to want to be drawn to them. 
that they're appealing to you, whatever it may be, it's going to be different for each of them. But you're going to be drawn to those things. For whatever reason, Esau was drawn to everything but God, it seems like, in his spirit. We're going to touch on some other scriptures that kind of speak into Esau's character. Esau had some character flaws that he never got addressed. For whatever reason, he never addressed them. Everybody has character flaws. Some are, some are small, some are big, and but you have to address them in life because if you don't address those character flaws, they're going to get the best of you. Because you're going to be drawn to things and you know what? You're going to gravitate toward those things. Your mind's going to run wild. And then thing you know, you're participating in things you, you really shouldn't be. There you are. When your desire for something is stronger than the voice of God in your life, it's never going to end well. Right. It's never going to end well. We have desires. We all have desires. But if, when those desires become out of control, mm -hmm. it happens. When they become out of control, nothing good is ever going to come from it. Right. Everything that you've ever worked for, everything that you've ever put together can be taken from you in a moment. Don't think not. You think, well, no, it, it can be. I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying it can be. It can be taken from you in a moment. <clears throat> Esau, he, he was going to be the patriarch of the family. I mean, he was, he was the firstborn son, so actually, if he just, he fell into it, you know, he, that's the way it was going to be. But he forfeited God's blessings. You know you can do that, right? God wants to bless us. As a born-again Christian, God wants to bless us. He wants to give us blessings in life. And when I say that, some people gravitate all night to money. That's not all what I'm talking about. I'm talking about blessings in your life. You know, God, they can be, you can forfeit those things by doing, being, led, being led into things that are not of God. You can forfeit it. God wants to do them, but you have another plan, evidently. You know, you you. you Run amok somehow. You know, your desires, all these emotions, all these things, and you're going out, all this stuff, participating in these things. Not only have you been tempted, you've been <coughs> into it. It's not easy out here in the world. You will be tempted. There are things that are going to come your way. You know right from wrong. You've got to do the right thing. But when you have a spirit in you that is uncontrolled, it's never going to end well. You know, some people, they just don't seem to be able to control themselves anyway. You know, I don't have any filter, they say. I just let it go. Or whatever it may be. You know what? I'm going to just do whatever. They, they, they don't have any filter. They have an uncontrolled spirit. An uncontrolled spirit is never going to end well for you. I'm telling you, it's going to end in destruction. An uncontrolled spirit. Next time... When you just want to do whatever it is, ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it really worth everything that I've ever accumulated, everything I've ever accomplished in life? Is it worth my relationship with God? Is it worth it? Some might say, you know, well, well, as long as I don't get caught, it'll be okay. As long as nobody finds out, right? God will forgive me. Some people say, you know, it's better to, uh, better to just go ahead and do what you want and you can ask for forgiveness later, right? That's, that's not God's desire for your life. So believe me, you know, God wants to hear a prayer of repentance from us when we've gone astray, when we've sinned, whatever it is we've done. God wants to hear that prayer of repentance from our heart. But it's not God's desire for us to, get, to go off into that. I'm trying to talk about some real things here. You know, I'm not talking, trying to talk about make-believe things, things that, you know, what, you know, just everything's in this, you know, wonderful and all that. This world, everything ain't wonderful. Sometimes this world's hard. Sometimes this world's hard. You deal with real light situations. You know, it's easy to come in here, but tomorrow when you go out in the world, wherever it is you're going, you're going to have to face real problems, and you're going to have to have real solutions, and God gives those. Just remember this, you know, when you feel tempted and you don't think anything's going to come of it, your sins will find you out. Your sins will find you out. Have you ever heard someone say, 
And I, I think I've been told this before, you know. They can't be that stupid. <laughs> we all know the answer to that one. <laughs> we all know the answer to that one. And some people, I think they take it as a challenge. You know what I mean? You know, what, what do they used to say? You know what? Back in the day, you say, hold my beer, watch this. That's what they used to say. No, when you hear that, somebody's getting ready to do something stupid. They're getting ready to do something stupid. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> As a young man, I'm sure some people looked at my life and probably said, he can't be that stupid. <laughs> I don't know about that. Hold on. I don't know. But sometimes, even as a Christian, you know what? You know, you're just like, what could they have been thinking? What could they have been thinking? By me doing things or you doing things, and you know you can forfeit God's blessings in your life. You can't put short-term happiness before what God has for you. You've always got to keep in mind that God has a plan. So sometimes that we want to go out and things that we desire, things that we're seeking after, whatever it may be, you've got to remember, is this in God's plan? Is this going to interfere with what God has for me? You know, I think Esau was a lot like many people that I meet today. They just want to live their life any kind of way they want, and they expect God to bless it. Oh, God won't mind. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? <clears throat> As we read the story of Esau and Jacob, just remember this, nothing that Esau did was against the law. He didn't break any laws at that time. He, he, he could legally sell his birthright. Wow. He, it wasn't nothing against the law, but we also know that it might not have been against, against the law, but morally and ethically, everything that he did there was wrong. You can do a lot of things out here nowadays. As an adult, look at all the stuff the law allows us to do. I don't hardly think I want to participate in a lot of that stuff. Amen. Just because I'm legally, uh, I can do it. You know, but we end up doing that with God, too. We try to have a loophole. Well, somehow, some way, you know, just because you find a loophole and you try to be creative in your way of thinking, don't think God is going to go along with it. Because, you know, God ain't going to bless no mess. He is not going to bless. We become creative in the way we think. You know, if I do this, I, God will go along. He won't mind. Some things in life, it, some things in life just don't matter. When, when everybody does it, you know what? Some things it doesn't matter. But some things do. All right, I'll give you an example here. We've got something that I, hold on. Now, I think most of us here, at one time or another, you still may do it. You know, have you ever, has anybody else had plastic bags at home? Well, they hardly give them out anymore. But uh, plastic bags, but you got a whole bunch of them, and you have a bunch of plastic bags stuffed inside of another plastic yeah. bag. Yeah. Or if you got paper bags now, that's all you can get, or you got a bunch of paper bags stuffed in another paper bag. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that matter that everybody does it? It doesn't matter. Everybody's doing it, it doesn't matter. Some things just don't matter. The wisdom comes in knowing what matters and what doesn't. Things like that, it doesn't matter if everybody's doing it. But when it comes to the things of God, it does. Mm -hmm. God is going to speak to you differently. God is going to speak into your life if you will allow him. Esau went down that path. He thought about nothing but his immediate needs and his selfish desires and all these things. And where did it get him? Destruction. Destruction. It's never going to end well. All the impulsive behavior, all those things, is never going to end well. Never take for granted the things God has done for you. I think sometimes we do. Some of us here have probably been saved so long, you take for granted what God has done for you. You know he did not have to do it right. He did it because he could. He didn't have to do it. You weren't just such a wonderful person. Oh, I'm going to do great work. And look at him. That's not what he did for me. He did it for me because he could and he loved me. And in spite of all my shortcomings, all my flaws and all my sins, he did it anyway. He didn't have to do it. Everything from you can be taken in a moment. Do not take today for granted. There are so many. Today is a gift. There are so many that don't have that gift. They don't have that gift. 
There was a difference between Jacob and Esau. Not only, you know, their, their personalities were different, their, what they did for a living was different, but something was just different about their character. There was something different. You know, in the scriptures, it, it foretold right from the very beginning, even though Esau was actually the oldest, it was foretold that Jacob would be over him. Esau made bad decisions over and over again. But when I look at the story of Esau and Jacob, you know, we, it's all for all of us to see what Esau did. But I, when I look at Jacob's life, I'm like, you know what? I don't think he was no angel. <laughs> he wasn't no angel. Now, he was better than Esau. Don't get me wrong, but he was no angel. I'm like, you know what? His brother was in a weak moment. When he come in for this bowl of stew, he was hungry. You know what? He's in there bargaining with him over a bowl of stew. Instead of just giving him, you know, I say, okay, you know, and giving him some stuff. He's in there bargaining with him. I don't think he was no angel. He, wasn't, he didn't have his brother's best interest at heart. It didn't seem like to me. He weren't no angel. So next time you think somebody's an angel, they ain't. <laughs> They're not. No. You know what? Everybody has their own best interest at heart. You know, we, we, we all do. You say, oh, not me, Pastor, not me. All right, well, I ask you this. The next time you see a group picture, and you're in that group picture, and it's the first time you saw this picture, who's the first person you look for? You look for yourself. You look for yourself. So don't tell me you don't have selfish desires. We all have it. It's our nature. It just comes that way. We all have it. We're none angels. We're none angels. But let me just say this as well. Jacob might not have been no angel, but it did not excuse Esau's behavior. Esau blamed everything that was wrong in his life on his brother. You know, he was coming to, later on, he was coming to get him. He was gonna, he was gonna take him out, he was gonna murder him. He blamed everything that went wrong in his life on his brother. When actually Esau should have looked in the mirror. That's the last thing we want to do. Esau's behavior, you know, we come up with a thousand excuses. Your excuses do not excuse you. They might explain you, but they don't excuse you. Now, I've got a portion of Scripture I'm going to read to you. Sometimes it gets overlooked in the story of Jacob and Esau. This kind of explains Esau's character. It doesn't touch on his entire character and what we just read. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, I'll give these, I know some people take notes. Book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Verse 16 and 17. I find this very interesting. He speaks to Esau's true character. He's speaking about Esau here. He says, Lest there be any fortificator or profound person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterwards, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance though he sought it diligently with tears. That's an interesting scripture to add to it when he speaks about Esau. It kind of explains more about Esau's character. Esau had a lot of character flaws. There was a lot of problems. And it tells me that it says that he was rejected. He found no place for repentance in his heart. In other words, it sounded like to me he didn't think he did anything wrong. Though he sought it diligently with tears. You know an emotional experience is not repentance? <clears throat> An emotional experience is not repentance. You can have the tears flow. It doesn't mean your heart's right. You're just sorry you got caught with what you did. The tears can flow. An emotional experience is not salvation. An emotional experience is not repentance. See, it goes back to the heart. It goes back to the heart every time. We can say the right things and try to do the right thing, but if our heart is not right with God, it's never going to work out. We're always going to struggle. Esau, instead of being upset with his brother, he should have repented. How many times do we blame our situation on everyone else instead of repenting and going to God and coming clean with Him? You know you need to come clean with God. You do know that He knows, right? When we are confronted by our sin, do we come clean? Or do we get angry? Like Esau. We get, you know, how dare you say that to me? 
when we really need to come clean with God instead of getting angry. Who do you think you are by saying that to me? We need to come clean with God instead of getting angry. In the book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 36, we see Esau blaming Jacob for all of his problems. Instead of examining, examining himself, Esau's character flaws were unaddressed. Now Esau is left with a big problem. It reminded me of a story. King David. King David is very well known. You know, we know he did mighty things for God, but we also know that he messed up a lot, big time. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, we see the story of the prophet Nathan confronting David, King David at the time. He, he, had, he was already king at this point in the story. 2 Samuel chapter 12, the prophet Nathan confronting David about his adultery with Bathsheba and arranging her husband Uriah's death. Now Nathan was sent by God. He just didn't say, I think I'm going to go talk to that man. Right. No, he was sent by God. There's a big difference. You know, some people want to put their nose in stuff that ain't none of their business sometimes. and <laughs> You know, that happens. But uh, no, Prophet Nathan was sent by God. And it was a dangerous thing that he did. You better be sent by God because King David had the power to take his life. We know the story, you know what I mean? Uh, Nathan approached him from a, a, you know, kind of a side angle, you know, he couldn't confront him directly, so he, you know, told the story of, you know, about the lamb, and, you know, and David's anger was so angry, you know, he was so aroused by the, his anger, by the story that Nathan told, that, you know what, he didn't realize he was talking about him. He said, surely that man will die. Nathan said, yeah, the problem is just, you're that man. Oh, man. I don't know. It doesn't give us his reaction, immediate reaction, his facial expression. And I would like to see that. That's why I like to do some time travel. I like to be able to see his expression. We know how it ended. But I wonder, you know, he says, you know, I wonder if he said, I'm a parent, but I wonder if he said, who, me? I'm not that man. Yes, you are. You're that man. King David had all the power to do whatever he wanted. He could have just wiped out the prophet Nathan. He had the power to do it. He said, I'll just silence him. I'll take him out. Nobody's going to know. Instead of getting angry, he came clean with God. Now, there was consequences for his actions, but he came clean with God. He didn't get angry. How dare you speak to me that way? I'm the king, David could have said. He come clean with God. When God is speaking into your life, what you need to do is come clean with it. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. Why well, see other people doing this? Come clean with God. Come clean with God. You got to come clean with Him. The difference between Esau and David was when, when confronted with their sin, David come clean. Esau got angry, blamed everybody else. He blamed his circumstances. He blamed his brother. I'm going to ask you between King David in that situation and Esau, who do you think was justified? King David. Because he came clean. Now there was consequences for his actions, but he came clean with him. Both had sinned. But the response was different. When God confronts you, how do you respond to it? When God's confronted me before, it ain't been easy. It's hard. I don't want to hear it sometimes. But I know God has my best interest and I know what I need to do. I need to come clean with Him. Sometimes we just overestimate our immediate needs and we undervalue our long-term needs. In the end, where is it that I want to be? I have to ask myself. Do I want to continue down this path or do I want to respond to God He's trying to speak into my life. Everything has a world, place in this world. Everything has a place for it. But coming clean with God helps us to know the difference. Because when you come clean with God, you will be in right relationship with Him. Those things in your life that you're dealing with, that you're struggling with, you don't think anybody knows about. God knows. He's seen it all. There's nothing hidden from Him. 
don't know where you're at with that, but is there something that you need to come clean with God about? This is between you and Him. It ain't between you and anybody else. It's between you and Him. It always has been. We make it about this and that. That uncontrolled spirit in you is going to lead to destruction. I'm clean with Him. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here today and you're not saved, today could be your day of salvation. There's no shame in that. Everyone has to have that day. I know what mine was. You know, to, to, if you're here and you're not saved today, God picked this day out for you. Isn't that amazing? 